The world of espresso is full of very expensive accessories that have maybe dubious impacts on the final quality of the espresso in your cup. But what about the opposite category? What about inexpensive accessories that have a big impact on the final quality. A few months back, we did a video on DIY cheap WDT tools, and that is something that would fall firmly into that category. It has a huge impact on your consistency of extraction, and it is very inexpensive. Two other products that might fall into this category are filter papers and puck screens. And these are two things that I've been honestly kind of hesitant to talk about because for me personally, I am very resistant to adding additional steps into an already complicated process that is espresso. You have your WDT, you have your tamping, you have your grinding. If you're adding on puck screens and filter papers, it starts to get very finicky. So I am resistant to adding these and I think that a lot of people feel the same. However, in 2022, I have been playing around with these two items quite a bit, and I'm now at a point where I think I can comment on how I have experienced their effectiveness and who exactly I think should use them. But before we do that, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that has thousands of courses that allow you to learn on your own time and at your own pace. For example, I am always looking to improve the quality of the videos you guys see on this channel. So when I saw that MKBHD was teaching a class on Skillshare, I knew that I absolutely had to take it. With over 16 million subscribers on YouTube, Marquez knows a thing about not only the tech he's reviewing, but also making videos on YouTube. If YouTube filmmaking is not your skill set of choice, don't worry. Like I said, they have thousands of courses ranging from interior design to cooking to photography to gardening. If you're looking looking to pick up a new skill, Skillshare is a great place to do it because you can learn on your own time and at your own pace. The first 1,000 viewers to sign up using my link down in the description below will receive one free month of Skillshare so that you can start exploring your creativity today. It seems that ever since the release of the Flare 58, puck screens have been an ever-increasing sight in people's espresso setups, but do they actually serve a purpose? That's what I set out to explore when I started using these about six months ago. And what I can say is that for me personally, I haven't noticed much appreciable difference in the quality of the espresso shots. If I had to search for some tiny little improvement, I could say that on low pressure, very long pre-soaks, a puck screen will help to hold together the integrity of the puck and stop it from getting very, very muddy. However, that is nitpicking, and to date, I really don't think that puck screens have a big difference in the final quality of espresso shots. Does that mean that they are useless? Absolutely not. I have continued to use this every single day, including this morning. Why? If they don't make a difference to the quality, why would I continue using this? Well, because it has a big impact on workflow and machine cleanliness. For very little effort, just plunking this on top of your puck, you are gonna keep your machine and upline water path much, much cleaner. It almost feels redundant to do a flush of the group head when you're using the puck screen. I still recommend you do, but that shower screen is kept impeccably clean. Not to mention that when you use a puck screen in combination with a filter paper, as we're gonna discuss next, knocking out the puck is so, so clean. It is sandwiched between two layers of material, it pops right out, and you barely have to clean your portafilter before the next shot. So, if you're not afraid to add an extra step to your workflow, I say go for it, add a puck screen. Your machine could thank you, and who doesn't like a cleaner, longer lasting machine? I'm gonna leave these fun ones made by Chris and Mocha Mondays linked down in the description below, as well as a more basic one if you don't feel like being this sarcastic first thing in the morning. Regardless of which puck screen you choose to use, one thing that you will want to ensure is that it is kept clean. Rinse it out thoroughly after every use and leave it in a well aerated space so that it can dry properly. If it starts to get clogged up, that will have a negative impact on your shots. Not to mention if it is mildewy and growing bacteria, that could even have negative health effects. So this isn't a major thing, but definitely make sure you are cleaning it properly. Moving on to filter papers, these are a little bit more complicated in what they offer and what may motivate you to use them. The first step to exploring filter papers in your setup is finding one that fits your particular basket. Now, you can buy them pre-made. I will leave these ones from Good Brothers linked down in the description below. However, what I would recommend is that you actually make them at home. 
How you would do that is by buying a very inexpensive hole punch. I will leave this one linked down in the description below as well. But once you acquire one of these, using your standard V60 or Chemex papers, you'll be making espresso filter papers at cents on the dollar. Just make sure you buy the appropriately sized punch for your basket. Another sort of interesting thing that I accidentally discovered was this scalloped shaped punch. Now it might seem unintuitive because it's not round, but what this actually allows is if your basket is slightly undersized, these scallops will slightly fold up the edge without buckling or bubbling the paper. So if you can't find the exact sized punch for your basket, you can get one of these scalloped ones and it will slightly adapt to an undersized basket. But that's enough about the filters themselves. What does adding a filter paper actually do for you? By adding a filter, you will significantly increase the flow rate of your shot. These two shots were with and without a filter paper at the same profile at the same grind setting. I had to dial a whole two steps finer on the niche to get the same flow rate as without a filter paper for this particular coffee. Because the paper is creating a layer of low resistance right at the bottom of the puck, this allows the water to not only flow vertically to the hole right next to it, but also flow horizontally across the filter paper surface. In my few months of using this, I've experienced two positives from that phenomena. One, more consistency from shot to shot, and two, higher extractions, because I was able to dial in finer due to that faster, more even flow. For that reason, I would put filter papers firmly in the category of cheap, but high impact accessories, way more so than a puck screen. Quantitative Cafe actually did a great analysis of that, and it was showing up to a 4% boost in extraction when using filter paper than without at the same flow rate and at the same brew ratio. For lighter roasted coffees, for faster flowing profiles, this is a very, very useful tool, even though it does stray away from traditional espresso prep. Another positive or negative, depending on how you look at it, is the actual filtering that occurs when you add a paper filter. Espresso baskets themselves are very porous. You can see the holes with the naked eye. And for that reason, they let through lots of material and lots of oils into the cup. When you add in a filter, some filtering occurs, which could result in a cleaner cup. And if you are conscious about your oil intake, a healthier cup. However, the negative side of this is that you could be worried about the impact on the texture and the body of the shot. And that was my fear as well. However, in practice, it just didn't have that big of an impact. The texture was largely maintained with a little bit of added clarity. It wasn't a completely different beverage in the cup. It was more of a subtle trade-off. So if you're worried about losing texture, don't let that deter you from trying a paper filter. You might notice some visual differences in the shot. They tend to be more uniform and pale as opposed to darker and tiger striped and beautiful which does make me sad, but I think that the trade-off for the quality in the cup is well worth giving these a try. The workflow for using a filter paper is relatively simple. You just pop one into your basket, run a blank shot to make sure that it is properly wetted and stuck to the bottom of your basket. And then what I like to do is ensure that the sides of the basket are clean by quickly wiping them with a cloth. After that, add your grinds and prep as you normally would. In the end, I think that both of these are worth giving a try if you are someone who is not afraid to add additional steps to your workflow because you're only making one or two drinks at a time, which is really the beauty of home coffee making. You don't have to worry about cycle times like you would in a cafe setting. So I will have these puck screens linked down in the description below, as well as this hole punch that you can use to create your own filter papers if you want to give it a try. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.